So there's a scientist named uh, Irina Ermakova. She gave me the following few slides when we were speaking together at the European Parliament. And these are rat livers on the right that were fed GM soy, and the rats on the left were fed non-GM soy. And you could see the changes in them. We now know that tiny levels of glyphosate cause fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is now uh, an epidemic with 30% of, of Americans experiencing it. It's a, it can lead to more serious issues like liver cancer. She also did a study um, where she found that the testicles of rats changed from pink to blue when they were fed genetically engineered soy. I like to leave this image on for a minute while I take a slow drink of water. To burn it in the minds of people and to affect half the audience. <laughs> and she also uh, fed these rats genetically modified soy. These are female rats. They're Russian-speaking rats. Uh, fed them GM soy starting two weeks before they got pregnant and continued through pregnancy and lactation. And more than half of their babies died within three weeks, compared to 10% when the mother rats ate non-GM soy. Well, as you could imagine, and also, by the way, they were smaller and could not reproduce. She was attacked viciously. She was a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences. She lost her job and was unable to find similar work after that. This is the kind of impact that Monsanto has around the world. I'm just giving a percentage I'm giving you a small percentage of the um, stories that I know about and have collected. And some of them more recently come from the Monsanto trials. I want to say I am so pleased that the results of the first three Roundup trials where plaintiffs were accusing Monsanto of causing their non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, that Monsanto lost and the juries awarded them $2.3 billion. Now, the judges reduced it to $190 million from $2.3 billion, but that's still a heavy chunk of change. And the last official count for the number of plaintiffs waiting for their day in court was 42,700, but unofficial estimates put it at about 100,000. So the, the recent evidence, the recent report now is that the lawyers are talking to Bayer, which owns Monsanto, and to do a settlement. And there's one lawyer who I know who's holding out because he thinks that he should get more for his clients. But it can go either way in the next few days. There is a, uh, a trial going on now in St. Louis that will be televised. So you can go online and, and Google it and find out how to get to the Monsanto St. Louis Roundup trial and have incredible entertainment. Um, and I'm going to share some of the, and I, we have even more entertainment, I mean real entertainment of stories from the lead attorney who won two of the three cases. His name is Brent Wisner. And we interview him at responsibletechnology.org. Monsanto does not like Brent Wisner. It could be someone's phone. If someone's phone is not on airplane mode in the front, you may want to put it in airplane mode. In fact, putting your phone, not just turning it off, doesn't stop the transmissions. You got to put it in airplane mode before you shut it off, and then, it, or even just airplane mode without shutting it off, and it stops the transmissions. So, if you want to get some really amazing stories, dramatic, better than watching those courtroom document, courtroom uh, uh, movies. Watch my interview with Brent Wisner at responsibletechnology.org. And that's where you can also make a donation, as, as it was recommended by Sam. So one thing we know is that the discredit bureau that I have been fighting and reporting on really exists. It's a budget item, and it calls, it's called Let Nothing Go. That's their program. Not a single tweet. Not a single post, certainly not a scientist discovering problems, certainly not Jeffrey Smith writing an article. Let nothing go was their policy. It's like scorched earth policy, and they had front groups and fake scientists and, and trolls all going after 
anyone that came out with a statement against GMOs or Roundup or Monsanto. So if you look at how they got Roundup with its active ingredient glyphosate on the market, and there's a lot of details here. You don't have to read it. I'll just tell you the story. There's a company called Industrial Biotest Laboratories that was, they actually were doing 35 to 40 percent of all toxicological tests in the country. And the Justice Department who investigated said, one person said, it was the place to go because everyone knew they'd get their products passed. How did they get their products passed? Because it was fraudulent. They did 22,000 toxicological studies, including 10,000 that were used for agricultural chemicals, 2,000 of which were considered the primary studies that resulted in allowing 325 insecticides and herbicides to move forward. And when they actually looked at the research over years and years, they found that maybe 10% were valid and the rest were fraud. And that most of those same pesticides continue to be sprayed on the fields. So what kind of fraud? In some, store, in some studies, 80% of the rats died and were replaced. The rat evaluations of those that died didn't exist. They would sometimes cut and paste information from one study and put it into another. They do two-year studies in eight months. They talked about doing evaluations of the uteri of male rats. You know, it's, they were completely, completely incompetent. I read 20 pages of it yesterday in preparation for this talk. It was like, yeah, it was absolutely disgusting what was going on in this laboratory. And it turns out that three people went to jail, including Dr. Paul Wright, who had worked for Monsanto as a toxicologist, and then went to IBT to oversee some of the studies for Monsanto, then went back to Monsanto, and while he was back at Monsanto, he was being indicted and went to jail. And 11 of the 19 chronic toxicological studies of glyphosate were performed by IPT fraudulently. And uh, even after that, when it was considered invalidated, more recently, a report by the EPA cited the IBT studies as reasons why it approved Roundup, not mentioning that it had been invalidated.